Hi there, it's Jeff and Cassandra from RV Parenting and we like to travel in our RV and we're not made of money. So this video is going to be all our tips and tricks and hacks on how to save money while you're traveling in your RV, whether you live in it full time or you're just weekend warriors or if you take longer trips like we do. So what do you got for us? Food. I'm all about <laughs> food. That's kind of my, my staple. Me too. <laughs> That's my role in the house is I really enjoy cooking. So does Jeff. We actually both really enjoy it, but that I've come into this new vibe of food and we just have a much better relationship than I think I've ever had with it. And Anthony Bourdain became obsessed with him and hence the <laughs> traveling and food. So for me, I look at the budget from a family of five, how are we going to eat? And it's very easy when you're on the road to want to eat fast food or go out to these local restaurants, to kind of get a bit of the scenery and the culture of the people. You're going to save a lot of money by just cooking in your RV. And even like, you know, going to Starbucks versus bringing a coffee maker in your RV with you uh, or putting iced coffee in the fridge rather than going to a coffee shop every time. We actually use a Keurig on the road. We bring ours with us. We find that I drink tea, Jeff drinks coffee, but for storage wise, that's safer you know if you've got the glass canister for the can what is it not canister canteen what is that? <laughs> see i don't drink coffee <laughs> uh, i believe that would be called a carafe the car i was so close i was in the right letter the keurig actually sits in our sink when we're traveling so it's easy to store just little things like that like trying to it gives you room to be creative so when you're cooking your meals you use all the things you bring your crock pot bring your favorite skillet be prepared with charcoal and burning woods for your your outside grill take advantage of these things because it does get expensive eating out now don't get me wrong we do like to go out and eat because again we're foodies we enjoy it and the culture of where we're at but the best policy is to just stay in the RV or you pick yeah. a carry and eat. And eat out for special occasions, but not every meal. Otherwise, your your budget's going to be way out of control. Yeah, and what we find too is if you get tired of eating the same sandwich, meats, and cheese, local delis in the area that you're at typically have different items that you're not accustomed to. We I remember we were in Terlingua. No, not Terlingua. Where's the place that has a goat as a mayor? That would be Lajitas. Lajitas. They had this wonderful deli there where I'd never had dill munster, some kind of crazy cheese and roast beef sandwich that we made <laughs> on the road in our RV and it was fantastic. So definitely take advantage of those small local delis when you're out and about. <laughs> and the next thing I want to talk about on saving money while you're traveling in an RV is gas. Gas prices vary considerably. Gas prices in California, I bet, are at least a dollar more than what we pay here in Texas, maybe even higher. So there's a couple of things I want you to do to get the best possible price at the pump. Say that three times fast. <laughs> uh, first is there's a free app for your phone called Gas Buddy. And you download the app, you just hit Find Gas. It pulls up all of the gas stations closest to where you're at. You can also do a map view. And it just shows you the prices as reported by other users just like you. And you can find the cheapest one in your area. And it's pretty accurate too. It is pretty accurate. And you can report it if you find that it's inaccurate. But I've only ever had to do that once. The other way to save a lot of money at the gas pump is by getting a Sam's Club membership. We just did that. Yeah, and you don't think, why would I go to a bulk store if I'm in an RV? Well, <laughs> A, you use it when you're home. And then you can also, that's a great time to stock up on drinks. You know, that way if you're getting a multi-pack of your mm -hmm. beverages or even snacks. You got to get clever with your where you're going to pack and what type of snacks you want to get. But the gas itself, that's worth the membership fee. And not every Sam's has gas stations in it. But most of them do, and on average, they're probably between 10 and 20% cheaper than the surrounding gas stations. So that's well worth it. A membership for Sam's Club starts at $45 a year. So if you're doing any sizable amount of traveling in your RV, that can save you well more than the cost of the membership. Plus, you get to shop there too. Yeah, and the gas in your car as well. Our third tip for you is planning your trip in advance. We find that when you give yourself six months in advance to plan for it, you can set money aside each month for your needs. Um, for instance, the first thing we do is book places that we know are gonna book up quickly first. So like we did Yellowstone, we're not even going until June, but Jeff is booking that back in what, December? December, yeah. And all of the campgrounds in Yellowstone were already booked. We had to book one outside the park, but luckily it's fairly close to the border. Yeah. <laughs> Thank goodness for planning. Uh, <laughs> but that's the thing is like figure out, okay, so first thing you wanna do is book your places and then spend that money right then. And then you wanna kind of look at other expenses like, okay, rental car, so maybe you plan for that next. And then each month set money aside for how much you're gonna need for gas. So if you know you're gonna spend, you know, 
let's say four or five hundred dollars on gas and you have a few months to save that money up so it's all about taking <laughs> each component and mapping that out accordingly we don't budget for groceries because again that's just going to fall in line with your daily needs anyway and the rental cars you can definitely get a better price booking that in advance rather than at the last minute because it's supply and demand with rental cars and and as the supply shrinks and the demand grows they're just just going to get more and more expensive yeah and sometimes we're not always the best at you know planning trips in advance we can do spontaneous trips let's We've... be honest we're not very good at planning <laughs> we, we are the king and queen of hey what do you want to do this weekend let's go do it and just you know throw money at the problem and, yeah. and, and hope it works itself or, out. So don't do what don't we do. Don't do what we do. Because we always, okay. every time we do a last minute trip, it always ends up being a lot more expensive than we initially wanted it to be. And then we end up having trip remorse until we go on the trip and realize <laughs> maybe it was kind of worth it. Give yourself time and dream as big as you want to dream and don't be afraid to do the baby steps to get to that ultimate goal. I think is that's the important thing is baby step your way into it. One, one financial burden at a time. <laughs> The next tip I have for you, and this doesn't always work, depends on what part of the country you're in, but start planning camping trips in the off seasons. This is technically a, called shoulder season. That's the name for this kind of thing, where you're going to places in the winter time that are normally a summer destination or maybe vice versa. But campgrounds and RV rentals, if, you're, if you don't own an RV and you're trying to rent one, campgrounds and RV rentals will definitely be cheaper during those times. However, we did find this on our past trip this October. We stayed at a Jellystone, I think it was in Mississippi? Yes, but it was expensive. Yeah, Jellystones aren't new. They're all over the place. And I think they're independently owned. But this place looked great. However, most of the amenities, the, the kayaking and the water park and things like that, didn't apply because we were there in mid-October. But they didn't lower their rates at all over what they would have been in the summer and they really should have yeah it was a hundred dollars for us to spend one night there and with no amenities yeah i mean it looked great and and you know if we were back that way in a summer season we would definitely stay oh there. yeah it was beautiful the tall mississippi has some of the most beautiful trees i've ever <laughs> seen i know that's hard to believe y'all but it's true and it's just beautiful it's right on you know it has this lake and you have the swimming pools that are adjacent and you can do the paddle boats and stuff it's a, it looks fantastic but the off season i mean yeah. be very careful about RV resorts in their off season and prices just kind of double check and make sure that you're getting what you pay for but a lot of places will definitely be cheaper in the off season just double check before you book one so the best months to book in an off season and again this does vary a little bit by location but the best months are always going to be march april october and november those are where you're going to get the best deals on campgrounds or rv rentals if you're renting one the worst months the most traveled months for rvers is going to be july august and december so as much as possible limit your travel during those months and focus when it works for your schedule on March, April, October, and November. Yeah, and even in those months, you have to look out for like biker rallies because a lot of those people, <laughs> a lot of bikers travel with RVs. That's where they sleep. They're on the road. I'm My stepdad loved riding his motorcycle. And so I became aware of like different locations, especially in Florida, that if there's biker rallies, the prices are going to even be more expensive during that time mm -hmm. as well. So just kind of be a little bit aware if, if there are music festivals, if there are the rallies going on, if there are marathons yeah. going on you'd be surprised who actually owns an RV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the prices will definitely get jacked up if you're if there's some big event nearby, you're trying to camp in Palm Springs or the time of Coachella, <laughs> yeah, Talladega Nights. <laughs> Which brings us to our next tip on memberships and why it's good to have memberships. And you've heard in our other videos about having zoo memberships and museum memberships, art museum, art museum memberships. That's a lot to say. But there are other memberships such as Good Sam, which is for RV travelers. This is mm -hmm. it's very inexpensive. It's twenty nine dollars. A lot of RV parks, I want to say like 85% of them take Good Sam. You can get anywhere between 10 to 15% discount off of that. So for 29 bucks, you can't beat that. You're going to save and money. They offer discounts if you prepay two or three year blocks. So you can save even more than that, but it's even cheap just for the one year. Yeah, like you if said. you want to do it and just try it out. We actually got an AARP membership because it was only $16 a year and that allowed us to get discounts strong discounts on car rentals because again we don't do a tow along which we've stated in other videos uh, on why we do that so it we did that one for the discount but then also some rv places take aarp we just haven't found them yet so <laughs> yeah and I, I i do think in retrospect 
we probably would have bought a good SAM membership knowing what we know now if we knew that back then. Yeah, I think, I think having both, I mean, for the price of it, we're talking about what, 45, 50 bucks. I think it's worth it for a year membership. So if yeah. you do that membership with the SANS membership, $100, and you're gonna save way more than that in the long run and all the benefits outside of just being in your RV, your day-to-day -day life when you're not on the road. So there's benefits to it. And I will say that, you know, don't get an AARP membership if you're thinking it's gonna save you money on RV campgrounds. It does save you money on car rentals, and we do rent cars with our RV when we're gonna be in a city more than three or four days. It's a great way to get around with without having to take our RV down um, and drive it around everywhere. So yeah. definitely do that, but don't buy it if you're thinking it's gonna save you money on campgrounds. It most For the most part, it won't. And one of my favorite things about Jeff is he's a fixer. And this has <laughs> been, this kind of ties us into our next, you know, what can you do to save money? And Jeff being the fixer that he is, can do small maintenances on the RV himself, which I value and appreciate <laughs> tremendously. It's a great way to save money, in, in other words, you don't have to take your RV to the shop for every little thing. Obviously, fixing a slide out because the roller popped out, definitely yeah. you do have to do that. And, and we're our sh ours is in the shop right now for that reason. But there are little things that you can do yourself that are surprisingly easy, like doing the oil change on a generator. I had no idea how to do that. I figured it out. He knows now. <laughs> I watched a YouTube video and then we ended up making a YouTube video that walks you step by step through that process. It's super easy. And if you're not sure how to do that, I'm going to link to our video down below in the description that shows you exactly how I did it. And I literally just kind of figured it out. It's not hard at all. Uh, but also your tires. Your tires need air from time to time. And finding a gas station air pump that it'll even go that high <laughs> is tricky. Uh, most of them aren't gonna be able to put the enough pressure in a, the large size tires of an RV. So I bought an air compressor that I just do it myself and top it off when we need to. And it works great. It just, it connects to the battery. It's super easy. I also have a video that walks you through that process. And I'll put that link down below in the description too. You'll see a card for both of them at the end of this video too. But, and then lastly, you're in a moving vehicle. It's a mobile go, home. <laughs> going over train tracks, speed bumps, you name it. And things are just naturally gonna come loose. And so having a small toolkit in your RV with screwdrivers and wrenches and things, and just occasionally going through and tightening things up is gonna save you a lot of hassle and headache. And those things are not worth taking it and dropping it off at the shop to get fixed. Yeah, and don't ever underestimate the power of zip ties and uh -huh. bungee cords. Always mm -hmm. have those on hand. I've never seen anybody use them as much as Jeff. But through this, I have learned they will fix 99% of your problems. So. We actually use a bungee cord <laughs> to keep our refrigerator door closed. It has a little lock on there, but it's super flimsy. Doesn't work very well. And we found out the hard way that we needed a bungee cord or something to, to keep the door closed because stuff kept flying out of there while we were driving. Yeah, and it's better than having to go and spend $60 <laughs> on this new lock. And what if that lock doesn't work and you're realizing where your refrigerator isn't as strong and as sturdy as you'd like it to be. So replacing that is $500. <laughs> Go get a ten dollar little bungee cord and just attach Not even it. Not ten dollars. Well, Come we, just, on. we probably have you to get a set around. of bungee cords for ten bucks. I don't know. Maybe this, five. This isn't my department. Can we go back and talk about food? That's what I, that's what I do. Yeah. But it's not. It's an easy fix. And does it look pretty? No. Is it functional? Yes. You know. And we don't leave it across the refrigerator or park. But it's just those yeah. little things will save you money, time, and frustration. And another way of saving money, by the way, one of my favorite things to do aside from cooking is boondocking and wally docking. There are plenty of free places to overnight camp. That's what we call boondocking. It's when you don't have access to electricity, you don't have access to water. You're just kind of free range RVing mm -hmm. out there in open spaces. Dry camping is technically the name for that when you're, you have no hookups whatsoever. So some places that allow you to park are for free are actually gonna be city parks, shockingly enough, I know, but some friends of ours um, actually do that on occasion. They'll go, they don't wanna you know, stay just in a, a parking lot, they want somewhere with a little bit of scenery, they have puppies, and they do, they'll just park at a city park. So wherever you're traveling, you can look in the cities and see what the rules and regulations are regarding that, but it is possible to, to do that. And also Wally docking, which is my personal favorite because you're in a Walmart parking lot, so if I need to, get supplies, we need gas, everything is right there. And it's just 
this interesting travelers community because you have truckers, you have young families like ours on the road, and you see the elderly couples on the road. It's kind of like everybody feels safe in this parking lot, and you don't think of Walmart like that, but it's this kind of <laughs> secret code that you get to be in, so it's pretty awesome. It's worth pointing out, though, that not every Walmart parking lot is available for Wally docking. Only about 50% of them are. There is a website that shows you the ones that do and don't allow it. I'm going to put a link to that. It's not our website, it's somebody else's, but I'll put a link to that down below in the description because it is an, an easy way to check and see. But you can also tell usually because you'll see truckers there and other RVs there and then you know it's probably okay. And some places like Camping World and I believe Holiday World where we actually purchased our RV, if you purchased your RV from one of their locations, they have places where you can camp overnight, just kind of catch a breath. So look into all your options. And those have full hookups. And those have full hookups and internet. So it's kind of, a, it's a win-win situation. They don't want you staying there for more than one day, but they want to support you. You came there, you purchased your RV, you're keeping their family alive, you know, it's a win for everybody. Um, so get very broad <laughs> in your search and be creative. And you'll find that there's plenty of inexpensive places to park or free places to and park. And it doesn't have to be concrete jungle where you're, you're doing your boondocking. You can do this on, on national forest land. Most public land is available for that. There are usually some stipulations about how long you can stay there and how far off the road you need to be and things like that. But there's tons of national forest land where you can go and boondock and you're going to be surrounded by beautiful nature and you're not going to be paying anything. Yeah, so just kind of, yeah, just throw your <laughs> cast out there and see what happens. And we do have a couple of videos about boondocking and wally docking specifically that go a little bit deeper into what it is, how to do it, how long you can expect, you know, battery life or generators and things like that to go. So check those out. I'll put links to those videos down below in the description too. I think that kind of covers everything on how we <laughs> save money and how we make it work for our family of five. Um, mm -hmm. Anything else you want to add to it? No, I just give us a thumbs up if you like this video. <laughs> it really helps the algorithm to spread our message, help more people, reach more people just like you. But for now, I think we'll see you in the next video.